I want to tackle a problem with arrays in this tutorial that may not be used frequently, but comes with some interesting solutions. We're going to look at how we can insert a data piece into an array at every so many elements. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript. As always, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. If you'd like to support what I'm doing, there are a number of different ways you can do that. In the description section, I provide a link to my courses if you'd like to dig deeper into JavaScript. I have provided a Patreon link as well with different levels of benefits. And I also publish on Medium, so you can follow me there, which helps me out. So creating a function that inserts something into the array, every nth elements, can be solved in a number of different ways. We're going to look at two of these. First, I want to take a look at using splice and then we'll look at mapping over the array to make that change so first splice now I'm not a big fan of splice because it is expensive and it can be a confusing command but I've done a tutorial on splice and I'll link to it in the description if you want to review that in addition to what I'm going through here but really quick, splice allows us to insert and or delete items in an array, and both can be done at once if we want. So what I want to do is look at the solution using splice first, and I'm going to look at the statement that we would use for the splice command, and then I'll add the other code around that. So let's jump in. Now this is the array I'm going to use, and let's say I wanted to insert a zero after every three elements. So a zero here, then here, and then one at the end. Uh, just the example I'm going to use here, we want to put that zero in. And so here's the call I'm going to make. I'm going to create a function that will insert every, that's what I'm going to call it, and three is where I want to insert it. Zero is the data, and this is going to be the array that we're going to pass in, okay? So really quick before I show that first statement with splice, let me set up the function insert every and parameters we're going to have array here the data there and then I'm just gonna call this and that's probably not the best name for that variable but that's what I'm gonna do alright now there's some other things we're gonna to need to do here but first I want to indicate the splice command so that way I can review splice really quick now I'm going to run it on a new array. So the array that's passed in, I'm going to clone that array, and so that will be new array. And so I want to run it on that array, because splice mutates the array that it acts on. All right, But I want to be able to turn a new array. I don't want to mutate the array that's passed in. So that's why I'm doing that. But here is this first part of this statement with splice. So I want to have a position. That's a position where it's going to be inserted or deleted. That's the first thing we define about splice is that position where that starts, where the insertion and the deletion starts. And then I'm gonna pass in a zero because the next parameter indicates what should be deleted, how many should be deleted. We want zero deleted. And then the third parameter will be the data that's passed in because this is what we want to insert. Now we could have more things after this that are inserted at this position. But this is how splice is going to be set up. Now, if we want to do that, every third element, we need to put this in a loop. So it's doing it multiple times. All right, so let me set that up. I'm gonna have a loop here. I'm gonna use a for loop. And let's start i equal to zero, that first part of our loop. Now, how many times do we want to run this? Well, really we want to run it as many times as we'll need to insert in the array. So in this case, if we're doing it every third, one there, one there, one there, that would be three times. So how can we get that? How can we get that number as a part of this loop? Well, if we take a look at our array here, this is our example, we have three, six, nine. If we then divide that by the three that's passed in, that will be three times. So that's how we can use 
our array, the length of our array to determine how many times through this loop, how many times we need to do this splice command. So let's go ahead and set that up. Array dot length. And then we're going to divide this by n. Now, one thing to think about here, it may not always divide equally. And so what do we want to do in that case? Well, if it doesn't divide equally, we want to use math.floor to go down to the lowest integer number because that's what we want to work with is those integer numbers. All right, so we'll use math.floor to do that. And then let's continue on, semicolon, and then we just want to increment i so that each time through the loop, i gets incremented. Okay, so that's the loop we're going to do. Now, inside that loop, that's where we want to put this splice command. All right. Now, before we go any farther, I've got my loop set up here, but as I mentioned, we want to clone this array. And so I want to set up the new array variable. And an easy way to clone an array is simply using the spread operator on an array. And then it spreads out those values and places it in an array. And I have a tutorial on a spread operator as well, if that's new to you. So you can look at that. I'll put it in the description section. You can look that up if you want. All right, the other thing I want to do in setting up variables here, I want to set this position variable. So how are we going to work with this? What is this going to be? Well, I'm going to set the position variable equal to zero. And then I'm going to modify each time through the loop. So this is where things get a bit more tricky. I need it to be 0, 1, 2, 3, right? That's where I need it to be the first time through, okay? So we can get to that. POS can be equal to that if we just add, whoops, that parameter there. Okay, so in first time through will be three. But then something to notice here, next time through it will be six. But we've just added an element, so we'll have zero, one, two, and then the new data will be three, four, five, six. It's going to insert it here into the wrong place. And so really that should be seven. Well. How can we get seven? Well, we're going to add i to POS each time through. So each time we add a new data piece to this array, i gets incremented as we're going through. And so it's going to keep up with each new data piece that is added. And so that's why we increment that, all right? This is the number of data pieces added. We begin with zero, one, two, and so we'll be able to put things in the right place. All right. Now, the last thing we need to do is just return new array like that. That, I believe, should do it for us. That should take care of what we're trying to do. Let's go ahead and save this and take a look at it. Let me uh, refresh and then go to the console here. All right, obvious we got a problem here, and it's in my for loop. I've didn't set it all the way up when I was doing this. <laughs> Talking too much about math.floor and the array.length divided by nth. Forgot to indicate what we want the loop to run to. So i is less than that. That's what we're trying to do here. So let's save that now. Let's try this again. Okay. Now if we go out to the console. We can see 60, 90, 80, then a 0, 70, 50, 30, 0, 20, 140, then a 0. So that's working for us. Now, one more example. I want to do one by mapping over the elements of the array. So let's go ahead and do that one. I'm going to comment out what we have here. And I'll just create that function again so we can use the exact same console log statement. Maybe I should have kept the function. All right. So this one, as I said, we're going to map over all the elements in the array. 
So what I want to do is take array.map like that. And then we need to pass in a function. This is a callback function. Map uses a callback function. And that callback function can take several parameters. The first one is each element as it maps over the array, as it iterates over that array, each element. The second one is the index of that element. Those are the two that we will need. Now, once again, I have done a tutorial on map. If you need to view that, I will link to it in the description. But let's go ahead and set up the function, the callback function that's going to be in here. As I mentioned, we want a parameter for the elements as we iterate over those and then a parameter for the index like that. All right, now as we iterate over each of these, what I want to do is check to see if the index, so 0, 1, 2, I want to check to see if the index divided by the nth number is equal to 0. Well, the modulo is equal to 0, I should say. So I want to get the modulo of whatever the index is divided by n nth here. All right, so we want to do something like this, idx. And I'm going to add a 1 here like this because 0, 1, 2, if I'm adding 1, that'll be a 3. And then if we divide that by the 3 that's passed in or whatever number gets passed in, that should be that should leave a modulo of 0. Modulo, if you've not used it, that gets the remainder. And so the remainder should be 0, meaning that these divide into each other equally. All right. And so if that's equal to 0, like that, then what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to use the ternary operator here, so I want to use a question mark. And this is where we insert the new data. All right. Now, the tricky thing about this is when it's not equal to, then I'm just returning the element so that can be part of this new array. Map creates a brand new array. Map iterates over every element in array and it creates a new array. So here, if that's not equal to zero, we'll return that element and that will get placed into the new array. Well, after the question mark here, not only do we need to return the element, but we need to add the data after it. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, turns out to be the best way or the way we can do that is by returning that as an array like that. Now, if you're thinking about this in a little detail, you're probably going to figure out that, well, this is going to create a sub array right here. So it'll be an array of arrays. Let me just show you that really quick. So I'm going to save that and we'll come out here again. Oh, and I need to return this from the function. So this creates an array that gets returned from the function. So we'll get a, an array to display with console.log. All right. Now you can see it's an array of arrays. So we have the right values, but we don't want it set up like this. Now, a way to flatten an array of arrays is using the flat method. But there is, in JavaScript, there is a flat map method. It will do both at once. It will map over the array and it will flatten it at the same time. And it's a little bit faster than if we do them separately, if we do both commands separately. So. That's what I want to do is flat map to solve this. So I kind of like this solution. A lot less to type, obviously, um, but it still accomplishes the same thing. And there we go, 60, 90, 80, 0, 70, 50, 30, 0, 20, 0. So that worked for us. Using flat map, passing in this function, using the ternary operator, checking the modulo of the index plus one divided by nth, making sure that's zero, and that's when we actually insert the data. Otherwise, we insert just the element. So two different ways to solve this. All right, if you are looking for more JavaScript content, remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section.
Also, click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release new tutorials as often as I can, and thanks for watching.